Fantasy Consortium's Wars of the Old World. Hello gamers, Matthew here from Grey Army Gaming in lovely Loon, Sweden. For this episode of Wars of the Old World, we are going to do something a little bit different. We are going to have a civil war in the Ogre Kingdoms. Yes, 1500 points of the Fire Ogres versus 1500 points of the Death Ogres. We can say that these two armies are coming into the frozen territory in the north and they are clashing into each other as they fight for the town of Orthanael and the magical orbs that are located in these different buildings. The winner of this match will claim this town and all the magical benefits that come from possessing these orbs. Well, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the armies and take a look at the layout and roll off for which scenario we will be playing today. And here's our first army, 1500 points of the Fire Ogres. The army is led now by a tyrant, and he is armed with the obsidian blade, and he has the talisman of preservation. He is joined now with a level 2 uh, fire belly who has the spells flamestorm and fireball, and he will also serve as our BSB. For core now, we've got six ogres with a banner, and they are joined here by nine iron guts with a banner. For special now, we have three lead belchers. Uh, in addition to that, we have two Mornfang cavalry, and for our rare, we have a scrap launcher. So there you go. Once again, 1,500 points of the Fire Ogres. For our second army now, we have 1,500 points of the Death Ogres. To the left now, we have our general, a level three slaughter master, and he has the lore of death with the three spells, the caress of Lanif, Doom and Darkness, and we also rolled for the Purple Sun of Zareus. To his right now, we have a BSB. For our core now, to the left, we have a total of eight Iron Guts with a banner. Over to the right, we have nine Ogres, and they also have a banner. For special now, in the back, we have our four Lead Belchers, and over here for rare choices, we have two Iron Blasters for a total of 1,500 points of the Death Ogres. Rolling off for scenario now, we have a three, which will be Battle for the Pass. All right, and here now we have our four foot by six foot board set up for Battle of the Pass. The interesting thing with Battle of the Pass now is we deploy our armies on the short side and they will engage each other now on the long side. We've gone ahead and set up our deployment now, so let's take a look at the final positions of both armies. Starting now over here with the Fire Ogres. Uh, we've kind of pushed ourselves to one end. We've got our two Mornfang here. There's our block of our uh, Iron Guts with our Tyrant in the middle. Here's our uh, Ogres with our um, nice Fire Belly right there. And we've got our three Lead Belchers. Uh, back here, hidden on behind this cover, we have got our Scrap Launcher. And they're facing down now to the Death Ogres on that side. And the Death Ogres have their setup here. They have got their uh, Iron Guts right here. And they have their Slaughter Master there. And in next to them, they have their Ogres with their BSB in it. We've got some Lead Belchers here. And we've got a cannon there and a cannon there on both flanks. So there we go. That's deployment and setup. Let's go ahead and roll off now for first turn. Fire Ogres now using the red dice and the Death Ogres using the black dice. Um, the Fire Ogres finished deployment first, so they uh, will be giving a plus one now to the Death. Here we go. And the Death Ogres will now start with a four to a one. All right, charges to declare. We have got none at the moment, so we're gonna go ahead and just do some remaining moves to position ourselves nicely. Let's start over on this side with our lead belchers. All right, let's go ahead here and um, let's slide these guys up four inches, and then we'll give them a two inch wheel. And there's their final position right there. Second, let's move our rhino blaster, iron blaster up its six inches to there. In addition, let's move our ogres up here eight inches so we don't get in the way of the line of sight of this thing. And their final position there. And then let's run over here now to the iron guts and get them their movement. We're gonna try to move them um, just outside of the average charge range of those other ogres. And there's their final position right there. Finally, let's go down here and we will just take this Iron Blaster and just move him up a few inches like so. 
Well, that's the end of the movement phase for the death. Let's move on to the magic. All right, wins of magic. Here we go for the death. Um, whoa, not very good. That's a five. Did they get a channel? No. And the fire ogres, no channel. So we are looking at a five to a four. All right, we got to do it. We're going to cast the purple sun from this guy, and we're going to send it off into this direction. Uh, let's go ahead and throw all five of our dice at it. So here we go. Um, 10, 15, uh, 18, we got it with a 21. And the other fires will try to dispel, and they did not get it, so it will go off. All right, there we have the template place, and we're gonna have this take a line right through here. That will hit almost everybody in that entire group, including our tyrant. So let's go ahead and roll off the number of inches. We gotta take the artillery die times three. 30 inches, that'll be perfect, go right through them. All right, 30 inches will indeed pass right through them, and if we follow the arc that we sent it out like this, we see that it will in fact go through all of those warriors and it will end up right here. Okay, here we go, we have to take an initiative test. If they fail the initiative test, they are slain outright. No saves allowed of any kind. Let's start out here with our tyrant, initiative of four. So if we roll a five or six, he is gone and he is fine. And now we have nine additional warriors here. They have really poor initiative of two. So on a one or two, they're safe. Everything else, they are taken out. Wow, an incredible roll there. So we have six guys that are removed from play. And that is definitely gonna require a leadership test here. So we have a leadership of nine on our tyrant with a reroll. And he makes it with an eight. And an utterly devastating spell there. Let's return back here now to our uh, Slaughter Master and we need to take the lore, of, uh, the lore attribute for okay, that. Okay, with life leeching now, we're gonna roll a D6 for every wound. On a five or six, we get one dice back in our power pool. So here we go, 18 rolls. Oh, that's amazing. And just like that, we get nine dice back into our power pool. So nine more dice for our Slaughter Master. I've never noticed this before, but when reading these instructions, I see that it says uh, I get to add a dice to his army's power poop. So there we go, nine dice in my power poop. All right, let's go ahead and cast the Caress of Lanif. Uh, and we need to do the large version because these guys are further than 12 inches away. So let's go ahead from our Slaughter Master. Let's go on to the unit of um, ogres there. And we need to um, to cast a 12 plus. So let's go ahead and why not? Let's throw six dice at it, see what happens. And we got it. And when I sent unit, I actually meant that I was gonna put it against the fire belly. So he's gonna take 2d6 hits minus his strength, which is four. So he's gonna take one hit on a four plus it wounds, nothing happens. And for our last spell, we have three dice left. Let's cast Doom and Darkness. We'll go from, um, once again, from this guy, and we'll send it over onto our um, leader, the Tyrant here. Three dice, we need a um, 10 plus, we gotta show seven. So we got it, which means that our Tyrant's leadership now is dropped down by three. End of the magic phase, a pretty powerful magic phase. Let's go on to the shooting phase. And let's begin by running over here to this side, and we will have our lead belchers take a shot onto that unit of lead belchers right there. All right, multiple shots, D6, whoa. All right, 14 shots, we're long range, so we're gonna be hitting now on fives. Here we go, 14 shots. All right, four hits, we get strength four, toughness four, so we're gonna be wounding on fours. And there's one wound, not so So all bad. of that ruckus, and we really only caused one wound over here, so we'll drop that guy down to two wounds. But the fun's not over yet. Let's run back over here, and we will have this Iron Blaster also taking a shot over onto those guys. And you can see here he has a beautiful unobstructed line of sight on them. All right, so let's go up here now, and we'll put a cannonball. Um, let's go 10 inches from the back of him, so right around here. All right, here we go, overshooting from our bounce, um, eight, and we are going to bounce a total of two inches. Uh, let's roll that again, 10 inches, because we have the volley of um, cannonballs, so it's gonna bounce 10 inches, so we'll easily hit that guy in the center. And causing multiple wounds now, um, six wounds on strength 10. Let's grab another die over here, so we need six wounds, strength 10. All right, here we go. Wounding on twos. So there we go, that's three more wounds. 
And for the sake of ease, we'll just slide this over here and take this guy off. All right, panic test. Um, let's go ahead and roll for these guys. Um, with the re-roll, they got it with a six, so no problem. All right, last thing for our shooting, let's run over here to this iron blaster and we'll have him take a shot right over here onto our leader here, his unit. Uh, we'll put it 10 inches from the back of our tire. All right, overshooting how far? Four inches, and we're going to bounce a uh, misfire. And because it is a volley of cannonballs, we get to roll it again. So eight bouncing all the way through him, which means he will be taking D6 wounds. There's two wounds on a two plus. So there is two, and we have a four plus. Um, Talisman of Preservation, he gets them both, so nothing happens there. End of the shooting phase. And uh, we've got no close combat, so that brings us now to turn one for the fire ogres. All right, let's run over here now and see if uh, we can have any distances here. Charge range, charge distances. Let's check these out before we declare any charges. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We have got our monstrous cavalry here, so we're gonna declare a charge with this Mornfang into that unit, and they will hold. And we will also declare a charge with um, this tyrant group into the Iron Guts and they will hold again there. Alright, here we go. Starting out with our Mornfang Calvary. We need to get a 16 here um, and we got an 18 so they will make it in. And our other unit of Iron Guts. Uh, here we go. They need an 8. And they got it exactly. All right, so here is how that combat will look now with everybody in base-to-base -base contact. All right, let's go ahead and do some remaining moves. Uh, I'll head over to these guys right here. Let's send our lead belchers out a little bit more facing down those other lead belchers there. All right, so just um, turning a little bit here, wheeling two inches and moving up four more. We'll bring them right there. And these guys here, let's uh, slide them forward a little bit. I'm a little worried about uh, that cannon over there. So let's go ahead and slide forward to get out of their line of sight. And there's their final position right there. Magic phase, winds of magic. Here we go, a uh, six and a four. Any channel for the death? No, any channel for the fire? No, so we will have a total of six to 10, 10 to six. All right, first spell we're gonna cast here is Flamestorm. And we get to place the large, we're gonna do the large version and place the large template anywhere within 30 inches of the wizard. And let's go ahead and put it right there. On second thought, we're gonna move it a little bit more in the center, because now we have it right in the center of all three of those. Okay, it's a 16 plus to cast on this large version, so we need here to show a 14 on six dice. And we did it for a total of 20. Um, Death is gonna go ahead and throw uh, six dice at it, and look at that, they got a triple um, irresistible, so that is going to be dispelled. So the death is saved from Flamestorm this time. All right, time. let's run back over here now and see if we can uh, have a line of sight for our direct damage, not, sorry, for our fireball ball spell. And when we look here, you see that we do in fact have a line of sight on that unit of ogres there. So we'll go ahead and cast fireball the remaining four. So needing a five plus here, uh, we need to show a, yeah, that's plenty. Okay, so that fireball right there is gonna cost 3d6 strength, four hits. Uh, for a total of eight hits and wounding on fours and Pretty decent one two three four five six and five plus armor goes to six plus because of the strength and they get nothing So we run over here, and we will be taking six wounds. That's enough for two guys No panic tests necessary because it's only 20% of that unit All right, let's uh, that ends up the magic phase. Let's go ahead and do some shooting uh, we have got uh, our two lead belchers here and our scrap launcher. Let's start out with our lead belchers and have them fire onto those lead belchers there. All right, here we go, D6 shots. And they'll be taking seven shots. Okay, long range, we're gonna be hitting on fives. And there's a single on a hit. Four? No. All right, and before we go too far in the shooting phase, I have to go back here because we forgot about the purple sun. So we gotta roll for that thing to see where that goes. That's gonna head four inches in this direction. So that will bring that one right here. 
Okay, with that resolved, now we can go to our last shooting here for the Fire Ogres. We're gonna go and take this Scrap Launcher. All right, Scrap Launcher is going to go ahead and drop a rock right in the center of uh, those lead belchers. And right like that, if we hit, we'll, we'll be hitting one right in the center and we'll be hitting two additional lead belchers. All right, here we go, let's see how we do. And it's going to be a move out in that direction two inches. So two inches will bring us right here. We will still hit all three, but none in the center. All right, here we go, wounding on fives. And there are two wounds, six plus save for their light armor. So we get one and lose one. This guy will be down to two. And that brings us to the end of the shooting phase. Let's run over here now to combat. And we have this big block of combat going on right here. To start here. us out, let's go ahead and take our D3 impact hits for each of our Mornfang cavalry. Um, so that will be um, two and, uh, excuse me, three and two for a total of five impact hits. Wounding on threes. And there we go. We got a total of four. Removing him and putting him down to two And wounds. more. We had an ogre charge here for these three guys. So let's go ahead and do a D3 there. Uh, we got another six, um, seven uh, impact hits. And we figure out for the uh, our leader here, our tyrant, on a one or two, he only does one. Uh, no, so he does a total of three. So three on threes, and they are all successful, and we have four of them onto fours. Look at that, for a total of six. Moving this one over here, and we will take these two guys off the back. Pretty powerful charge there. Next, we're gonna have our tyrant here um, issue a challenge to our slaughtermaster, and he will accept. So these two will go ahead and fight it out. Same initiative, so let's go ahead and have our uh, fire ogre start here. He's gonna be hitting on threes, five attacks, and wounding on fours. Talisman of Preservation, no. So he's gonna drop down two wounds. Bring him down to three. And the slaughtermaster coming back now with four attacks. Uh, we're hitting on fours and wounding on five, so no. Okay, we got Iron Guts on Iron Guts, um, and everything's got the same initiative here. So let's start out with the Fire Ogres. Um, nine attacks, and we are going to be hitting on fours. And let's see. Duh, 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 duh. There we go. And wounding on fours. Three wounds for a six plus save. No, so we will lose... Um, this guy here and this guy will be dropped down to two as well. And we should have just done the two um, ogres on the Mornfang right away. Fours and fours and a six save. No, so he's dropped down to one. And let's go ahead and do the mounts. And I forgot we all have lots of attacks here. Uh, I missed a couple, so uh, there's a few more attacks. And wounding on fours, no. Okay, now we can go ahead and do the mount. All right, here we go, eight attacks. We're hitting on fours, and we will be wounding on threes. So here we go, and we got and all of them. is too strong for those attacks, so we will lose this guy and another guy. Oops, not our banner. We will lose that guy right there. Okay, Iron Guts coming back. All right, because it's all same initiative, we still have nine, nine attacks going into um, those guys right there, hitting on fours and uh, wounding on fours as well. And not so great. We have a six up save, no. Or actually five up save, but it wouldn't have mattered. And let's have um, these two guys that were here uh, attack the riders, the Mornfang riders. Fours. And wounding on fours. Okay, we got light armor, and we are uh, plus two bonus for being on Mornfang Cavalry, but it's a strength for attack, so we are going to be saving on fives or sixes. Uh, we got one save, so one of these guys uh, is killed. All right, there you go. Um, that's the end of that combat. Let's go ahead and figure out combat resolution. So the fire ogres did 20 wounds. Um, they had a charge and they have a banner, so that's a total of 22. Um, the other guys did four back, so they're 18. That means these guys are down to double ones. Double ones with the reroll. No, let's try it again. No. Okay, the Death Ogres are gonna have to flee now, and they're gonna go a total of seven inches. We will pursue first with the Morn Fang, um, and they are going to go a total of nine inches, and we will then attempt to reform uh, with our other guy. Um, no. But he gets a re-roll. That's a six minus three um, because of his doom and darkness. So he just gets it. So 
Uh, our leader here, these ogres, um, excuse me, iron guts will reform. So the first thing that happens is those guys take off their flea distance. The Morn Fang is going to chase them down and he will pursue all the way his full distance. And that is where he will end up having chopped down the general. This group over here is going to reform and facing down these ogres right here. And that is how everything looks now. That brings us to the end of the combat phase and the end of Fire Ogre turn one. Let's move over here now to turn two for the death. Charges to declare. Uh, we don't have any. These guys are outside of their arcs, so we have no charges to declare. Let's go ahead and do some remaining moves. I think the best thing to do for these guys right here is just to reform, so we'll go ahead and do that. And we'll turn them just a little bit more this way to face those guys right there. All right, and let's come over here. Let's have these guys right here move up a little bit here uh, so we can get a um, shot off on those guys right there. So a four inch move like this, and then we will have a two inch wheel like so. Final position right there, and if we get down low, uh, we see here that we have a nice line of sight onto the general for the fire ogres. And with the same idea, we're gonna come over here with this chariot, and we will slide him right here and turn like so, so he also has an attack, a line of sight onto potentially that unit right there. End of the movement phase. We have no magic because our slaughter master is dead. So we are going to have to move right on to the shooting phase. Let's go ahead and start out with um, these lead belchers. Shooting at that unit right there with the leader. Okay, here we go. D6 hits for each one. Nice, a total of 14 hits. And of course I meant 16 shots. We are at long range now, so we're gonna be hitting on fives. Hitting on fives. And wounding on fours. And there we go, one, two, three, four. And that is armor piercing and strength four, so that negates their shield. So we will have to take, uh, let's see, this guy will lose two of his wounds and that will put, um, let's see, one, guy down to one. All right, panic test, we still have doom and darkness, so it's a six on the reroll, no! Six on the reroll, no! These guys are gonna take Turning off! Fling, how far? Three inches. Oh, that doom and darkness is a powerful spell, which makes me think um, I did have a chance in the magic phase to dispel it with the army. I could have dispelled it with the army, but I forgot about that entirely. My mistake, and they will suffer the for, uh, consequences for it. Three inches so There we go, there they are, I'm fleeing out there three inches away from the nearest enemy. All right, let's go ahead now and take a shot with our cannon. Let's go ahead and try to take out their leader here. Let's go 10 inches from the back of our leader. All right, here we go, overshooting by six inches and bouncing eight, um, a total of eight inches. So that will go right through him. All right, here we go, wounding on a two. Yeah, so in multiple D6 wounds, uh, one measly wound. Talisman preservation? No. So he'll be dropped down one wound. All right, next let's come over here and turn this guy. We're gonna shoot a cannonball right through here. It looks like we're going to be able to uh, clip off everybody there. So let's go ahead and go 10 inches from the back there. There we go. And it bounces 10 inches, hits directly on the back of that guy. It bounces through 10 or four. So we take the highest of the two. So bouncing through 10 inches, and that will take us right through, uh, looks like our fire belly as well. Let's measure that So out. it's brilliant. Yes, it will hit our uh, tyrant and go right through and also hit the fire belly. Starting off with the tyrant now, we're going to be wounding on a two. Yes, and we are doing D6 wounds. Another one measly wound. Um, and uh, we got a four plus talisman of preservation. Yeah, he saved that. Now we go over here to this guy. Also hitting on a two, yeah, D6 wounds, two wounds only. Talisman of Preservation, five plus saves, and he gets them both, amazing. Okay, and with that we come to the end of the shooting phase for the Death Ogres, that brings them to the end of their turn since we have no combat. Let's move over to Fire Ogres turn three. Okay, charges to declare, um, it looks like we are kind of stuck. He is out of his forward arc, so he's not going to be able to charge there. And these guys are not able to charge because they will run into their own unit here. 
so we are unable to make any charges but let's go ahead and see if we can rally these guys right here um, they're gonna be rallying on a six with a reroll and they miss it the first time and they got it this time and spinning them around like that let's go into remaining moves all right we're gonna go ahead and just shift this mourn fang like so so he is facing down that cannon and um, let's go over here and see if we can do anything with these guys. Hmm. Not really. That terrain piece is kind of in the way, so we're going to have to leave it at that. Let's go on to magic phase. Winds of magic. Here we go. A five and a three. It um, doesn't matter if they dispel. We don't have any guys left, but we are going to take our eight dice and try to dispel doom and dark. Throwing six at it, army dispelling, and we get it. So that is Finally off. All right, no more magic. Let's go ahead and take some shots. Let's take these guys and fire over onto those uh, other lead belchers there. All right, D6. And that's a total of seven shots on fives. Oh, not so great. Wounding on fours. And we got one more wound. Dropping this guy down on one wound now. All right, and for our last one, let's go over here to the scrap launcher. Let's do the same thing and send a big old rock or a pile of weapons crashing into these guys. We'll do the same thing. We'll put it on his head right there. And we'll be scattering that direction. How far? 10 inches. So that will miss entirely. End of the shooting phase for the fire ogres. Not much happening there. And because there's no combat, let's move on to the death ogres. Charges to declare. Death ogres are sitting pretty nice, so they're actually not going to declare any charges. Let's go ahead and do some remaining moves. Um, these, this guy will come right here. Um, and park himself right there. This guy, let's have him uh, come a little bit like this and park himself like that. And uh, anybody else need to move over here? Um, let's actually move these guys backwards just a little Feels bit. It's like kind of a wimpy thing to do with ogres, but we're actually gonna bring these guys back here three inches and let the cannons and the shooters do their and work. there's their final position there all right we've got no magic let's go on to shooting let's start out with these guys taking uh four of these guys shooting over here at those uh, lead belchers all right here we go d6 shots and wow 11 12 13 16 all right, hitting shots. on fours and wounding now on fours as well and we've got uh one two three four so we go over here we take two away from that guy he is down to a measly Leadership one. Leadership on a seven, they're fine. All right, let's run over here now to this Iron Blaster and let's go ahead and fire from him and let's go straight out here into our uh, Tyrant, once again, our general. So make sure we turn the nozzle a little bit. We'll go 10 inches from the back and see how much we overshoot, misfire. All right, misfire chart, uh, a five is lurch. Moments before firing, the Rhinox pulling the Iron Blaster gets spooked and lurches in its harness, buckling and snorting, roll a scatter dice, and turn the Iron Blaster to face a direction roll. The cannon may not shoot this turn. So we will turn the Iron Blaster like so, and it cannot shoot anymore this turn. Let's move over here then and take a shot with this one. All right, from here, we're gonna go straight from our nozzle here and right into the, uh, let's go 10 inches from the back of our tyrant. And uh, let's see how much we overshoot by. Um, two, and it bounces how far? Two, and we take the highest of these two, two. So we overshoot two and it bounces two. That means we come up short. So that brings us to the end of that shooting phase and we have no combat here. So that is the end of death turn. Let's go on to Fire Ogres turn four. Okay, charges to declare. Let's go ahead and declare a charge from here onto there and he will hold. Second, let's do a charge from these guys into them and they will also hold. Rolling it out first with our Mornfang and seven inches, no problem. So he will get in, come here and turn like that. And over here, six inches. And you will not believe it, it is their lucky day because they are exactly 12 inches out. So we will come here crashing up into combat. Remaining moves, let's go ahead and just move these guys right here. Um, they're normal six inch moves. And there's their final position right there. And I keep forgetting that guy. I forgot to roll him out last time. Um, that's a misfire, so that will come off the board. Okay, let's go for the uh, Winds of Magic here in the Magic phase. Um, and do we get a channel? 
Yes, we do. So we get a total of eight dice. All right, eight to five. Let's go ahead and do Fireball, and uh, we'll cast it from this guy. We don't use a template, but I just like to use that to show you. Fireball, let's do the big version, which is an 18 plus. Throwing six dice at it, and we get it with a miss. 3d6 hits, and a total of 12 hits. Strength four. Okay, here we go, 12, we need sixes. And we got two with a four plus save, so it goes down from uh, five wounds down to four. And rolling on the miscast table. A so six. that's Calamitous Detonation now, and we have everybody here taking a strength 10 hit. So all four of these guys. So for the wizard on a two, and he has a five plus ward save, he saves that. Um, and then each of those other guys on twos. Um, so there's two wounds to one. All right, shooting phase. Let's have our lone guy right here take a shot once more at these guys over there. And he will be hitting with D6, two shots, um, and hitting on fours, and wounding on a four, yes. And that's enough to take this guy off, which means these guys need to take a panic test. And they're fine with a four. All right, and once more, let's go ahead and fire off from the scrap launcher right over here onto these guys, we'll put it over his head, hitting all three again. Is this the one? No, we keep missing eight inches that direction, so it's gonna fall off them again. End of the shooting phase, and uh, let's run over here now to this combat here. And it's a beautiful combat right here. All right, starting off with the tyrant into the unit. Threes and threes. Obsidian blade, no armor saves, so that is going to take a guy off the back. And I realize that I haven't been using the great weapons uh, for any of the uh, iron guts tonight, so we're not going to start right now. Uh, these guys coming back, same initiative then, six attacks. So fours and fours, nothing Coming there. back now with the ogres. Pretty good here and wounding on fours. So here we go on four. And the Iron Guts uh, five plus is turned to a six plus because of the save, so they are able to save two. But this guy only had one left, uh, so we take him off, and the other guy is down to two. All right, combat resolution. Let's go ahead and figure this out. We've got um, three wounds from the fire, and they had a charge, uh, and they have a banner. In contrast, we did two wounds uh, coming back the other direction, and they have two kinds of banners, and they have an extra rank. So that was a tie combat. No musicians to break that, so that is where that will stand. Let's run over here now and take this combat between these two chairs. D3 impact, and we got two there. On fives, and we have one there. save. That is a six. So that was a successful save. Let's go on now and attack. Nobbler Scrappers here have the highest initiative, and they do not hit with a Let's three. Let's have the uh, Lead Belcher Rider here. Um, go for uh, fours and fours. No. And the Rhinox cannot uh, attack to its flank, so we'll go ahead and head over to the fire guy. First the rider on fours, and let's do another four. Come on, no. Morfang, don't let us down now. Four attacks on fours, and wounding on a three. Uh, so we got a wound there. Six plus save. So no. not much happened here right now, but we had a charge here, so that means they lose by one, combat by one. So leadership down to a six. Oh, and they got a seven, and they have... Um, Ooh, do they have any possibility for reroll? We gotta check our banner and here. And he is within the range of his banner, so we do get a reroll. Here we go. And it's an eight. No, he's gonna fail and take off and run. And running how far now? With swift stride. He's gonna go a total of nine inches. And we will pursue. And we also go nine. We catches him, takes him down. So he runs here into the wall one inch away. We'll remove him. This guy will go his full nine inches, and that's where he will stay. And with that combat resolved, the Death Ogres will now bow out of the game. Uh, unfortunately for them, they don't have a whole lot left. They have these uh, Ogres right here, these bulls, and they have these three lead belchers here, and they have a war machine. But points-wise, they cannot stand up to uh, the Fire Ogres, who have Mourn Fang, have the equal number of bulls, uh, but who also have their mage in play, and most importantly, their general and their BSB. So there we go. In the end of turn uh, four, the game goes to a victory to the Fire Ogres. 
Well, there you have it, folks. 1,500 points of ogres versus 1,500 points of ogres. Now, this is a pretty close game, as you would expect when it's a civil war, when you have fairly equally matched armies up against one another. Now, I did think that the Death Ogres would carry the game because I thought that their artillery, their shooting phase would be really strong because they had two iron blasters. But unfortunately, they really didn't perform that well during the shooting phase. And in contrast, the Fire Ogre Tyrant really kind of swept over the battlefield and carried that army into victory. Well, thank you for watching this battle report uh, and for joining us here at Grey Army Gaming. But more importantly than watching, we would love for you to come join us. If you're interested in challenging us to a game, please do contact us, greyarmygaming at gmail.com. Send us a description of your army, possible days when you can play, and we'll get back to you about coming into Loon, Sweden, to the gaming store, Playo Take It, where you can throw down some dice with Grey Army Gaming. Well, thanks for joining us today here at Grey Army Gaming, where Grey can always play.